Hello and happy Thursday, everybody. Here's what's coming up tonight on Now Beer. <laughs> Sounds good, right? Yeah. So craft breweries, huge business in our state. Are there too many craft breweries out there? How do you get involved? We'll take a look at all of it. Plus, a lot of you still don't have power, and here we are telling you to check on your friends and your neighbors and your family. Some of you can't do that, so we took it upon ourselves. And we'll update you on nine-year-old Jacob, a boy with cancer who's going to be having Christmas early next week. He's been asking for cards, and you guys have provided. This is News Center Now. I thought, I thought I was seeing things. Checking in on your elderly neighbors, why just popping over could make all the difference. Save your receipts, take many, many pictures of what you have damaged, uh, whether it be trees or food, whatever you have. And if your house or car is badly damaged, what's the best way to get you the money that you need for those repairs? Those stories coming up on now. For many, the priority right now is getting the power back on. Good evening, everyone. I'm Amanda Hill. Yeah, and I'm Lee Goldberg. Four days after Monday morning storm, which MEMA is now calling the windstorm of 17, more than half of the affected households have now gotten their power back. But that still means thousands are without. Right now, about 130,000 people still in the dark. Central Maine Power, Emera Maine, Maine Emergency Management, all of these agencies are working around the clock to help get people back to their normal lives, but they've left the hardest cases for last and their progress may start to slow down. Um, the other thing I would ask if I was a customer so without power and you're paying attention to what we're saying, we're, we're reducing this number by 100,000 a day. You have 100,000 left. Are you going to get it done? But what I want to share with you is, as we get closer to the end, we have the harder and harder work to do. We're on the more rural roads. We might have to put four or six bucket trucks to pick up one customer. Officials say some trucks are having to turn around because the roads are still blocked and they can't access the power lines. Even though they are working as quickly as they can, their number one priority has to be safety. Emera says they hope 90% of their customers will be back online by midnight tonight, and both utility companies say almost all households should be restored by Saturday. So some Mainers are dealing with much more than just a power outage, and that's bad enough. But what if a tree fell on your house or even fell on your car? Is the government offering any natural disaster assistance to help you pay for those repairs? Tennyson Coleman has a look at your options and how you can make sure you're getting the resources you need. Hey, Tennyson. Hey, guys. The powerful wind and rainstorm from earlier this week, as we all know, has left a trail of destruction here in Maine. Here's what you need to know about whether you'll receive any help from the government. Assessing the damage after the wind and rain wreaked havoc in Maine this week. The state is pursuing a federal disaster declaration, and MEMA has been working to collect information on storm damage, both public and private. If your property was damaged, assistance from FEMA may or may not be coming. At this point, it's too early to know about individual assistance, but we do encourage people to collect the data. In the meantime, you should take many pictures of anything you lost during the storm, including spoiled food. If you have to make immediate repairs, save your receipts and let your local government know. Document all costs directly related to the storm. If federal individual assistance does become available, we'll communicate widely and provide an 800 number where people can apply. If you already have homeowner's insurance, your damages should be covered. The types of claims we're seeing this week would be uh, shingles blown off roofs, uh, trees falling into buildings, fences, play structures, um, food spoilage, uh, which many uh, policies cover. Dan Garrett is a manager at Brogue Insurance and Financial Services in Bangor. He says you should make repairs to your home as soon as possible if the damages are hazardous to your safety. There's an expectation that you're going to do everything possible to minimize any further damage. With the extent of the damage in Maine, it may take a day or two for your insurance agency to get back in touch with you. 
Well, the companies are still telling us 24 to 48 hours to uh, get contacted by the company adjuster. Uh, we're finding that that's holding up this week. But it will take much longer, days, weeks, or maybe even months, until you hear back from FEMA. It's going to take a number of days to get that paperwork in, get those figures in. We are still in a response and a recovery mode. And representatives from MEMA say the numbers go from the municipalities to the counties and then to MEMA. That's where they will compile the data and get that info to FEMA, which will then decide how much, if any, assistance will be given. There are separate thresholds that must be met for both public as well as individual assistance. MEMA says the threshold for public assistance is 1.9 million. The threshold for individual assistance is, well, still uncertain, guys. All right, Tennyson. Yeah, I know a lot of people have questions about that, so thank you very much for that. Now, it's been a very expensive week for a lot of families in our state without power. Many have had to eat out while their groceries go bad in the refrigerator. So we want to let you know that if you are a Bangor resident, the city is offering to help pay for your lost food. According to a Facebook post, starting tomorrow, residents can walk into the Bangor Health and Community Services Center and apply for city assistance. They will be open from 8 until 4. And that rain could be coming back tomorrow. Yeah, the good news is nothing like Monday morning's storm. Keith Carson joins us for a first look at the forecast. Hey, Keith. Hey, uh, no, guys, nothing like that, uh, hopefully for a long time, but more showers coming in. Some showers moving out right now, moving through Bangor, eventually through down east. This is probably the last of it for most of us, just a few sprinkles back to the west. And uh, you can see the heaviest stuff right now, again, up towards the Bangor area. If you look at this on the whole, it's a warm front nudging its way through at the moment and a cold front back here in between is the warm sector and we're going to get into that for about half a day tomorrow and it's going to shoot our temperatures up very quickly through tomorrow afternoon. So here we are tonight, the last of the showers moving through. Watch tomorrow morning. We start much warmer than our average high for this time of the year and we drive quickly into the upper 60s. I think a few sh shots at 70 degrees by midday tomorrow before showers and maybe a rumble of thunder comes through tomorrow afternoon. Things clear out by tomorrow night and a quick temperature change going from near 70 degrees on midday Friday down into the 40s and only staying in the 50s for highs on Saturday. Uh, nothing says November like thunderstorms and 70. All right, breaking news at this hour. According to the Kennebec Journal, a judge rules that Andrew Balser will be tried as an adult. Balser is accused of murdering his parents in their Winthrop home last year. He was 17 at the time. More on this story as it develops. There was a fire at a vacant mill in Sanford this morning. It's under investigation by the fire marshal. It's the second abandoned mill to catch fire in Sanford this year. The two buildings are actually right next to each other. Officials say that this morning's fire did not lead to any structural damage and the building is still standing. Convicted child sex offenders will have to turn in their passports and be reissued international travel documents that identify them as a registered sex offender. The new passports will have a notice on the back cover. It's part of international Megan's law trying to stop child sex tourism. The State Department says it initiated the changes yesterday. Still to come on now, we got a very special request from a concerned daughter. I wouldn't put a pastor. Really? She's always doing things like that. Christina Rex shows us how easy it is to check up on our elderly neighbors in a time of need. And anyone who enjoys a cold brew will want to stick around for our special report on the status of Maine's beer industry. Is the market overflowing? We'll be back right after this. All right, a lot of you know the theme of our show is Ask Now. You ask us about a story we deliver. In this unique situation, we delivered pizza. Okay, don't get any ideas, but <laughs> this was really just too special to turn down. We received an email from a woman in San Diego, California, asking us to please check on her parents who live in Brunswick to make sure they were okay after the storm. Is your daughter's name Kim? Yeah. She sent us here to check on you. <laughs> she told us to bring you a warm meal and make sure you're doing okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't believe it. What was your reaction when you saw me in your driveway? <laughs> I'm shocked. I thought, 
I thought I was seeing things. Kim set this all up. She emailed us and Ready? said, Good afternoon from San Diego, California. My parents, Pat and Barbara, live in Brunswick, and I live in San Diego. I know that power hasn't been restored yet, but here's my silly request. My parents are in their 70s and live with three dogs and two cats. Could you please go by and check on that? A very large tree fell on their house and left a large hole in the back part of the house. They took these trees down and cut them down just to get them off, part of them off the roof. A section of a tree, probably two or three feet, is still on the roof. Their house is structurally damaged in the upstairs part of their home, which has significant water damage inside the you home. You can just see the water was pouring out of the fan. I know that you all are doing your best to reach out and get different stories from residents in the area, but what, it would mean the world to me for you all to check on them. Is there any way you could also get them a warm and meal? Thank you from the bottom of my aching heart. Kim. That was nice. Yeah. Look, you're all getting all teared up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know you raise good right. kids, right? Yeah. They're all sweet. Yeah. All for them. Hello. Hi, is this Kim? Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm with your mom. Your dad. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> oh, we're going to get you. Barbara and Pat don't expect to get their power back until at least Saturday. But for now, they say they're happy with a warm pizza and family who loves them. In Brunswick, Christina Rex, News Center. Okay, if you need to check on your family, we recommend you call the police to ask for a welfare check, not your local news station. But it was still pretty special to be able to help Barbara. And okay, Pat. parents, adorable. Oh my gosh, uh, I really teared up because I thought about like my dad. Yeah, and I hope that my kids will do that for me someday. Yeah. Two and three. Did you see how much pizza Christine ate? <laughs> Listen, you I'm do just, this all the time. I'm just you saying. food judge. No, I'm I out just, on this. My I'm point is, she didn't bring any this. to us. I don't care how much she had. I just wish we had had some. I That's live across all. the street. Oh, from I just want to share. In on that. <laughs> when now returns, we rise, we rise, we raise, we raise a pint to Maine's beer industry. Microbreweries are focused on making sure their products can stand out from the growing line of taps. And there could be a few showers this week, but there's also a warm up in store. Keith Carson maps it out next in the full forecast. If you look down the row of taps at your favorite bar lately, you've probably noticed more and more Maine beers available. According to the Maine Brewers Guild, about 12 new breweries opened up in 2017 alone, and Maine ranks, <coughs> excuse me, in the top 10 of most breweries per capita in the country. Getting all choked up over but, it. But, I know, it's, I, it could use a drink. Um, <laughs> but is, is it nearing its ceiling for new craft beer makers? I don't know. Chris Costa is going to tell us the answer to the question. Well, Lee and Amanda, the Maine Brewers Guild actually commissioned a study that expects the number of breweries in Maine to grow by double digits over the next three years. Now that seems like a lot, but brewers here welcome the growth and say it's competitive, but maybe not in the way you think. You might be just a little crazy to stand in the rain waiting for beer. It's a brand new beer that they've never had before, so you know, you do what you gotta do. This is Maine's beer scene. Ravenous hop enthusiasts will stop at nothing to taste the latest tap. A glass of it, let's make it happen. Churning out can after can is now normal for Bissell Brothers, a brewery that started less than four years ago and is now one of the most popular in the state. This is our first sort of foray into blending. Peter Bissell remembers the first time he and his brother saw crowds like this. They like us, they really like us, oh my God, you know? I remember Noah and I peering out of the garage door like, oh my God. Three so city one industry. Even at noon on a work day, there's still a crowd. Uh, get to interact with all these customers from all over uh, the East Coast, it's a ton of fun. On a release day, Bissell Brothers can serve thousands of customers with lines wrapping down the street. Their secret? And you need to let your own personality show through in everything that you do. In 2016, Maine had 77 craft breweries and ranked fifth in the country in breweries per 100,021 plus adults. The number of breweries in Maine has more than doubled from 2011 to 2016. The Maine Brewers Guild says about a dozen more opened this year. It's an industry that's come a long way since Geary's Brewing opened as New England's first microbrewery more than 30 years ago. And we're just humbled by the fact that we got the opportunity to continue to get it, keep it going. Alan and Robin LaPointe are the new owners of the company, taking over at a time when the beer market is becoming more diverse. It's a daunting task in order to make sure that we're being good stewards of the brand. And while at the same time, like Robin's saying, we got to stay relevant and we got to make sure that we're uh, attracting new uh, and younger 
uh, consumers to the brand. So it's a very, it's an interesting needle you have to thread, but it's really fun and exciting to do it. They achieved that balance through two styles of brewing, using the traditional English mash tuns, 60 barrel closed fermenters, while also using these new fermenting tanks for the new styles of IPAs. So we do it under a CO2 blanket. Not only does it expand their selection, but also their processing power. Every blend of hops births a new beer. Feels great. Ian Dorsey uh, co-founded Mass Landing in 2015, and its beers now sit on shelves and taps next to some of Maine's heavy hitters. But getting there took some risk. It was scary, but also I feel like it made me work even harder because there was no backup. This had to work. It's a very rewarding feeling to be where we are. But at what point does the industry's pint glass runneth over? Bars and restaurants only have so many taps, while saturated market can sound like curse words to some businessmen, it's actually the opposite for many brewers in Maine. Innovation comes from saturated markets. Competition brings out the best in everybody. As long as breweries are continuing to have their number one focus be high quality beer, I don't think we're anywhere near a ceiling on this yet. We're in the age of specialization. You don't want to attract everybody because you can't. People cannot drink all the beer that is offered. Competitive? Yes. But these brewers also describe Maine's industry as fraternal. We would bend over backward for any other brewery around if we got a phone call and somebody ran out of hops or their delivery didn't show up. And I think that's something that's really, really awesome and, in, in my experience, very unique to Maine. It's a restaurant town with a beer problem or a beer town with a restaurant problem. Now, obviously, there are a lot of choices out there, so we want to know what your favorite main made beer is. Post to our Facebook live stream right now or any of our social media platforms using the hashtag MyMainBrew. I'm sure there will be a lot of answers to I'm that. looking forward to reading them. <laughs> yeah, there's so many options now. going to learn a lot. All right. Uh... So how do I go across? Do I go do across the desk? Just climb across right here. here. Procedure. Oh, okay. <laughs> how many beers did you have what? during that story? How many? To do that. Uh, yeah, a lot. Uh, Baxter's what are window you seat. Do you guys don't have any off the top of your head? Oh, are we doing this? Are we supposed to talk about? I thought we were going to weather. I don't know. All right, fine. <laughs> well, <laughs> then Baxter's Listen, the only one that wins today somebody. because of oh, your what? actions. All right, here are the showers <laughs> moving out of Maine. A lot of clouds out there right now too. We're in the, the warm sector during the overnight hours. You can see this warm front nudging through. That's what gave us these showers. The first half of tomorrow has a lot of potential. will be between this warm front and this approaching cold front. And it's quite mild in between those two. Look at these temperatures. Washington, D.C., 71, 74 in Charlotte. Columbus coming in at 68. So all of this air moving in our direction through the first half of Friday will make a run at least at 70 degrees. Showers end tonight, last over the mountains and northern Maine. Tomorrow morning we see filter sunshine and temperatures get into the upper 60s before showers and maybe even a rumble of thunder moves through tomorrow afternoon through tomorrow night. Then we clear out and cool down, dropping into the 30s for Saturday morning. And Saturday is a bright day, but it's cool. Highs only around 50 degrees or so. We do the same thing on Sunday. It's up to some clouds and some showers in the forecast at that point. Here are tomorrow's high temperatures as I see it again. It's a big range. Best chance at getting to near 70 degrees will be Lewiston. Actually, I'd like probably bump Augusta up maybe 65, 66 degrees, 68 in Freiburg and 68 in Portland. Uh, needless to say, these temperatures are hugely above average, almost 20 degrees or so, and then things cool down as that front comes through tomorrow afternoon. There are some indications, though, that we will finally flatten into a more normal pattern temperature-wise. After the number one October in Portland and Bangor, watch this overall temperature trend. We're warm tomorrow, we're mild actually on Monday, and then watch these purples kind of sit here and trough out for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and maybe Saturday of next week. So temperatures will actually be in the 40s for highs, and uh, that will feel jarring. Uh, it's not unusual for November, of course, but it will feel kind of odd to us. And it will be sunny during that time period, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. But this is starting to set up the pattern that we should be in in November, which is cool enough that you could potentially see snow sometimes. And uh, we just haven't been anywhere near that for so long now. I'm also just happy to see that you've come on to my no tie side. I did. Before what I ever think? came to your Whoa, tie side, you you've notice? come to my no tie side. I'm just mixing it up. I, I think for this show, we're no tie guys. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. That's cool. I don't have a tie. No.
See? All right. <laughs> All right, thanks, Keith. <laughs> Update now on a story we brought to you yesterday at about, about a nine-year-old named Jacob Thompson. Jacob, who has been battling cancer for years now, has a limited amount of time left, and he and his family will be celebrating what they're calling his last Christmas next weekend. So Jacob has asked for Christmas cards, and the response has been beyond amazing. These pictures are just a few from today, where Jacob started receiving an overwhelming amount of love and support. What he really, really wants and loves is homemade Christmas cards. If any toys get sent his way, they will be shared with all of the kids who are in the Barbara Bush Children's Hospital. As Jacob's story spreads throughout the country, more and more mail will come his way, and the main med mailroom is ready for all of it, so keep on sending. Mm. We'll continue to add pictures and videos to Jacob's story on our website, so be sure to check that out. All right, we got a lot more news coming up at 5.30. Cindy Williams has a preview. Hey, Cindy. Hi, guys. Yeah, without power, a lot of schools had to cancel classes, some for a day, some for a lot more. Here's the question, though. Are students and teachers going to have to make up those days come spring? Are these snow days, in other words? Well, there are lots of rumors online. Samantha York is going to verify what the real answer is. And a big recall that you're going to want to know about if you keep fire extinguishers in case of emergencies. And you should. Those stories and more coming up at 530. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Cindy. News Center now continues after the break. All right, today's brain draw is pretty lighthearted in general. Uh, it is uh, my one science tweet, which is now trending at least in the nerd world on Twitter. So he said, if you had one thing you, you want the entire world to know about your field of study in science, what would it be? All right, hit us with the first one because I don't remember the order here. Uh, okay, this is actually really interesting. This girl is a cancer survivor who is one of Forbes 30 under 30, and she said there's 200 different types of cancer. There isn't going to be one cure. That's a really good point because people talk about this mystery unlocking that we're waiting for, yeah. but it's a very varied field. All right, let's move on to the next one. Uh, this one I'm trolling Lee on. Vaccines are safe, effective, and one of the greatest public health achievements in history. My one science tweet there. It gets more fun, though. Polar bears don't live in Antarctica. And he's, they said that four times. Do you guys Why? know that? I did Because they live in the Arctic. Uh, dolphins aren't fish. Dolphins aren't fish. Another one. They're mammals. Why, do you, why, did, did, why are they repeating here? Uh, because happening? they're basically saying, how could you not know this? Okay. Uh, another one, by the way, that uh, I don't think we got a chance to put on here, and this one kind of caught me off guard, was that octopus don't have tentacles. They, they're not classified as tentacles. They're what are classified they? as eight arms. I what? guess it's, there's a difference based on uh, how the anatomy is. But these are, I thought the animal ones were really interesting. If you go and click on this, uh, you'll find a lot of very interesting ones from doctors and things that they, people just don't know and they misstate all the time. And some of them what are true, too, right? Some of, yeah. some of the true. <laughs> like, nine go. out of ten of them are accurate, yeah. yeah. How there, do you say you many octopus, by the way? Octopi, right? Octopi. Is, it, is that what you yeah, said? I, I just, it feels right. Octopi, say goodbye. Feels right. <laughs>